They have been the masters of Stone Doom European scene since 1993. The English magicians of Electric Wizard play a very loud music full of psychedelic and occult influences that we enjoy consuming as a drug. At Hellfest in 2014, in France, we met their leaders in order to ask them a few questions about the main topics and the imaginary of the band. Just Auburn and his wife, Liz Buckingham, were happy to speak about the cinema, heavy metal and Satanism. Nevertheless, with their passion for the 70s and Serge Gainsbourg, perhaps Electric Wizard is a hippie band in disguise. Are you ready? I have to say, I'm totally deaf, man. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, hi, this is Just Oberon from Electric Wizard. Uh, here I am, too hot, and waiting for two days for Black Sabbath. <laughs> Why did you fall in love with the uh, 70s and uh, 70s atmospheres and uh, 70s movies and 70s uh, music? I think, uh, to be honest, it's what we grew up with. I mean, there's something... I, I grew up in the 70s, that's where I'm from. <laughs> I listened, my mum was playing me ACDC when I was seven years old and I was watching Hammer films when I was like, you know, 10 years old on TV. I mean, and you, just kind of looking back on the era. Plus the 80s, I think, for a lot of people who grew up were like, the shittiest era of all time. I mean, it was kind of like metal wasn't popular unless it was totally shit. I mean, the underground was all it was about during the 80s. So, I mean, we would look back to the 70s when rock was big. We used to think, look, Sabbath were huge in the 70s. Now they're like, nobody gives a fuck. I mean, now, okay, but 2014, Sabbath were huge again. But the 80s and 90s, people like shit on metal, you know? It was like, you were a scum. You're long haired crap, you know? You'd no job, nothing. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, they hated us. I mean, I was prepared to be nice. Uh, can we say uh, you are a EP band in disguise? Huh? Oh, I'm, a, I'm not I'm a two pieces in love. <laughs> I, I, I always liked about Sabbath was the way they were kind of blew the hippie dream out the window, you know, with war pigs and shit. I mean, they said, you know, okay, there's the hippie dream of the new world, but we're still in Aston fucking on the doll eating shit, you know? Like, that's the reality of the world. The only people that are going to enjoy this hippie world are a bunch of rich cunts. Fucking the rest of us are still going to be eating shit and working in a factory, so... <laughs> I still believe in that. <laughs> you are also a great uh, fan of Gainsbourg? Gainsbourg is a character, I think. I really... In I like him. I like what he stands for. I like what he's tried to achieve. He's a cool guy. I mean, he, look at all the girlfriends he had. That's inspirational already. <laughs> I think anyone who's a musician can look up to Gainsborough and say, well, there's somebody who does what he wants to do. I mean, just, and, and gets away with it, you know? Just, I, I liked his music, and I found Melody Nelson, I mean, it's, one of, it's a really great album. I think anyone can accept that. I mean, I just got into his character. I know the French were like, oh, you like Gainsborough, but it's like, I can understand what his attraction, I understand why he's cool. It makes a lot of sense to me. And, it goes beyond the music, I think. If you, you have to get into his character and kind of understand where he's coming from, and I think then you then you enjoy you enjoy all the music. Then I mean. would you like to make uh, a black mass with uh, with Gainsbourg? That would be awesome, yeah. <laughs> I think he's a you know he's a very progressive character. I think he would he go for it, you know. And when he did Nazi rock and shit, I mean, what was he? He was trying to fuck with people. He wasn't, he, right back then, he was like, I'm gonna fucking be punk rock, fuck you. <laughs> um, why did you fall in love with dark things, evil things, uh, Satan, uh, Satanic, Satanic, Christ. why Satanic rights, why Satan, uh, what murders and drugs? Uh, you know, it's, it still goes back to what we grew up with, really. I mean, yeah. I mean, there was a time when metal was fucking evil, you know? I mean, I remember the Satanic Panic when Heavy metal men, people were genuinely frightened of heavy metal. I mean, the man in the street thought we were devil worshippers, and this was the beginning of a new era of Satan. And these long haired freaks would, and their black clothes were part of that. I mean, 84 for me was the year of fucking total metal, you know? I'd pick up the paper, there'd be like, somebody stabbed a fucking glam fan, you know? Fucking, <laughs> the, the fucking guy with the black metal, fucking their venom shirts, fucking be sleeping in a coffin, stabbed his fucking his mother and sh this shit used to happen all the time I mean it's all covered up now they metal became more political they had different influences going from hardcore 
I almost see like a conspiracy to like end the satanic metal. I mean, there was something happening in the early 80s where we all lived for Satan, you know, Venom and Slayer. We were prepared to kill anybody. And these black metal bands that came around in the 90s, they were just trying to recreate that feeling. They remembered how we felt in 84 when we were fucking, we were the terror. And they wanted to recreate that, like fucking get the public scared again. Burn some churches, make them fear the metalheads. <laughs> we're the fucking revolution. We've had enough of your bullshit. <laughs> So we can say uh, that uh, society is more violent than heavy metal. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> why is, why uh, is cinema uh, so important for you and for your music? But personally, I think because we smoke a lot of pot, and it's a, it's, there's a lot of visual element to music for me. I mean, I, I enjoyed Black Sabbath, those bands, because they, they conjured images in my head. Uh, I liked I liked escapism. I like that's why I like metal. I wasn't into hardcore and punk. I wanted to escape from the world. I hate the fucking world, you know. And bands that create that create those, those fantasy worlds where you can lose yourself in this shit. I mean, that's what I wanted to create and get into that world. And the movies are, you know, the, this visual. You got to you close your eyes. I mean, you see things when you listen to metal, right? I don't know what you see when you listen to Black Sabbath, but I don't see flowers and shit. I just see fucking. Doom, you know, black clouds, mountains, volcanoes exploding, stukas diving, fucking vultures. You know. <laughs> These things are like make me happy. They don't, they're not miserable to me. <laughs> uh, do you want to make a uh, horror film? Making a horror film is something you can do when you're older, you know. I mean, I can't rock fucking on stage till I'm 70, but I can direct a movie when I'm 90, you know. I got something to look forward to, I think, you know. <laughs> I can do it when I'm older sit there in the director's chair directing movies and uh, you can also uh, make the music for the movie oh, yeah, of course. i mean this uh, to me this that's something that is, takes it to another level i think maybe you know adding music to, to the film and, and mixing them together it's, it's gonna be something new i think with modern movies you got a lot of uh, a lot of classical music used all the time now a lot of quite cheesy um, motifs used in the music and there's not so much rock music used in films anymore like there was in the 70s. I think there was some really good stuff coming out whereas people were starting to edit like the, the film with the music. Of course it just turned into MTV but I want to take it back, fuck MTV, let's go back to like the 70s. <laughs> it was something interesting happening, you know. What are your favorite uh, films uh, and direct or directors? Uh? Jose Larraz. All of his films I love. Um, it's all the usual films, Jess Franco, Gene uh, yeah. <laughs> Rollin, Shyamalan, and yeah, Shiver the Vampire is a particular favorite. And I mean, you like Jess Franco, Jean Roland, I mean, they're classic directors. I mean, nothing they've done is wrong. I mean, you can keep delving into it for a long time. <laughs> There's a lot to discover. Like uh, directors as uh, Dario Argento, Alejandro Jodorowsky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I even like his new films. I, I like the way he directs. I like the feeling he evokes in all his films. I can still watch it. And, uh. Would you like to, to make a, 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 a music show with uh, the Holy Mountain uh, projected behind the scene? Oh, we've, we've done this in London and we did, oh. it turned out quite well. We worked with the guys from Hawkwind, their lighting show, to sort of create a whole effects we had different films for each song and everything I mean, it's quite a, a process to do it's really hard I mean just editing down you know 30 second clips from movies it took me like almost six weeks to do it for one show but it's so awesome to you know get it together like that on that on that level bringing people like totally into the whole the feeling and it really worked didn't the gig was awesome you know people were lost in the, the whole feeling of it Can you say uh, some uh, words uh, about your future uh, release? Well, it's coming soon. It's called Time to Die. Um, we've been working on it for two years. Every cunt in the world has tried to stop us releasing it. It's cursed. Every <laughs> label, every studio, everyone has tried to kill this record. But it's got a fucking spirit of its own now. It's, it's a record of fucking hell. It's cursed. But we're really proud of it, aren't we? I mean, to the point where, like, I'm not even going to say you know anything about it really. I mean, I'm hoping all the fans are going to be fucking destroyed by it. You know, this is this is our this is our fucking final message. You know. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot.